Hello everyone. In this video tutorial, we'll be looking at the concepts of meliosmos and osmolarity. Now, osmolarity is one of those topics that many, many student pharmacists struggle with, maybe because we don't see it in everyday life. But the concept of osmolarity is extremely important when it comes to making preparations that are instilled in bodily fluids. So what will happen in this tutorial is we'll look at what meliosmoles and osmolarity are, and then we'll go through three strategically selected examples that would help you understand how to calculate meliosmoles and osmolarity. Now, whenever you put a preparation which has some solute in it, those particles do exert some osmotic pressure. And actually, the osmotic pressure depends on the number of particles that are present in any given volume. Now, the way you quantify this osmotic pressure is by determining milliosmoles. Okay, so milliosmoles basically captures the osmotic pressure that is present at any given time. For bodily fluids, in general, the osmotic pressure is about 280 to give or take 300 milliosmoles. Now, why is this significant? Whenever you put in something in the body, let's say in the blood or even in the eye, you want to ensure that the osmotic pressure is basically equal to what pertains in the bodily fluid. Other than that, you have some issues. So there are three scenarios. You can have a situation where your preparation has a lower osmotic pressure. And in that case, we will say you have a hypotonic solution. What could happen is your red blood cells may swell. They would absorb or you have fluid shifting into the cell to compensate for the difference in osmotic pressure. The other scenario is you could have a solution that has a higher osmotic pressure than the blood or the fluids in the eye. And what will happen is you have fluid shifting out of the cells and so your red blood cells, for example, may shrink. Now, the ideal scenario that you're going for is you want your preparation to have a similar or equal osmotic pressure to your bodily fluids. So in the case of your red blood cells, fluids will remain where they are. You have fluids shifting in and out of the cells. So now having said all that, let's see mathematically how you can capture milliosmoles. Milliosmoles can basically be considered as the product of millimoles and the number of particles. What this basically means is you should be familiar in determining millimoles. And you, if you have an issue with that, just check out my video, which um, talks about milli equivalent calculations. And we do a lot of um, in-depth analysis of how you can actually compute millimoles. But beyond that, you should also be able to determine the number of particles. And most of the time, when students come up with wrong answers, it's because Either the millimoles is not calculated correctly or there's an error in determining the number of particles. So we'll look at how you determine number of particles in a little bit. The other way you can express this equation is actually to break down the millimoles into the ratio of quantity in milligrams divided by the molecular weight. So what then is the difference between milliosmoles and osmolarity? Osmolarity is basically a concentration, and that is typically what is used. So osmolarity is the quantity or the amount of milliosmoles in a liter of solution. All right, so osmolarity is a concentration, it's per volume, per liter of solution. And that's the main difference between milliosmoles and osmolarity. So in determining osmolarity, we see milliosmoles per liter, which is a concentration, and that can be determined using this nice equation. So you have the weight of the substance. 
It's important to note that the weight of substance is in grams per liter. So at any point in time, you want to be sure that you have your um, concentration in grams per liter. Otherwise, it wouldn't work in using this particular equation. And then also you have your number of particles multiplied by a factor of 1,000. Okay. So let's look at a few examples then. Okay. Or before then, let's actually talk about how you determine the number of particles. If you have an ideally behaving non-electrolyte, for example, dextrose, then you have one particle. That's because it doesn't dissociate. Okay, so if you have a non-electrolyte, it doesn't dissociate, and then the number of particles will always be one. Example, dextrose, okay, or mannitol. However, if you do have electrolytes, then it depends on the number of species that are present when it dissociates in an aqueous environment. So let's look at two examples. We are all familiar with sodium chloride. When you put that in an aqueous environment, you will end up having a sodium cation and a chloride anion. So one sodium chloride molecule gives you a sodium cation and a chloride anion. You have two species, so your number of particles is two. If you have calcium chloride, it's going to dissociate into calcium cation and two chloride anions. So you have one calcium cation and two chloride anions, which means you have three species and so you end up with three particles okay so let's see an example of how you would actually calculate milliosmoles so here it says calculate the number of milliosmoles corresponding to 0 0.386 grams of sodium chloride what are the steps that we need to go through Step number one, let's understand that we'll use this equation. It's basically milliosmoles equals millimoles times number of particles, where the millimoles is given as the ratio of milligrams of substance to molecular weight. We can easily convert the 0 0.386 grams to milligrams, and we know that the molecular weight of sodium chloride is 58.5. Okay, so the other thing that we need to determine is the number of particles so step one you first determine the number of particles in the compound in this case sodium chloride which is NaCl NaCl dissociates into sodium and a chloride ion so you have two particles okay two particles step number two you plug all this information into the equation above okay so you end up with 386 milligrams divided by the molecular weight 58.5 you multiply that by the number of particles and you end up with 13.2 milliosmoles it's really that simple okay now example second example we'll look at some scenario where you can determine osmolarity so let's say you've been given this question and it says calculate the osmolarity of 15 milliosmoles dissolved in enough water to make a total volume of 100 ml. Okay, what we said is osmolarity is milliosmoles per liter of solution. That is osmolarity. Okay, so what we then need to do is make sure that our volume component is given in terms of liters. We already have our amount or our quantity of milliosmoles, but we need to ensure that our volume is expressed in liters. So how this question will break down will be, you have osmolarity, which is milliosmoles per liter, being equal to 15 divided by 0.1. So 100 milliliters, if you convert that to a liter that is divided by a thousand you end up with 0 0.1 liters and so your answer to this question will be 150 milliosmoles per liter it's really that simple 
Okay. Now let's look at the third example. And here we'll get the opportunity to use the equation that we talked about previously. It says calculate the osmolarity of a solution containing 0.9% sodium chloride. So you have a percentage strength in there and that is going to allow you to determine your quantity. Okay. So we're going to use this very nice equation that we talked about. Milliosmos per liter is equal to weight of substance in grams per liter divided by molecular weight times number of particles times a thousand. So we first need to determine the number of particles and then more importantly determine the weight of the substance in grams per liter. We know that molecular weight of sodium chloride is 58.5 grams per mole. Okay. So let's see how this breaks down. Step number one. First, determine the number of particles in the compound. Once again, our example is using sodium chloride. So we know that NaCl in an aqueous environment would dissociate into a sodium cation and a chloride anion. You have two species, so your number of particles is two. The second step is to determine the amount of sodium chloride in the liter of solution. We were given a percentage strength, 0.9%, which means it's 0.9 grams in 100 ml. We want to find out how much we have in 1,000 ml. That's one liter of solution. So you set up a proportion, and now what we do is we solve for our unknown, and we end up with 9 grams. So we have 9 grams per liter of solution. Now step three, we plug all this information into our equation. So nine grams per liter goes in the numerator. We are divided that by the molecular weight, which is 58.5. We multiply that by the number of particles, which is two. We multiply that by a factor of thousand, and we end up with 307.7. So that is actually the osmolarity of the 0.9% NaCl solution that we we're looking at. And since we know that 0.9% solution of NaCl is isotonic, this number actually uh, makes more sense because in bodily fluids, like we said, your osmolarity is about 0. is about 300 um, milliosmoles thereabout, okay, per liter. So I hope this really helped you have a better understanding of um, how to calculate milliosmoles and osmolarity. And if you have any questions, just send me an email um, or check out the link below.